we're over here at the front pond. Hang on a second, Laura. Hang on. I don't want you falling in. And you can tell falls here. Look at the hostas are turning yellow. And this whole lotus is coming, is like introverting back into itself. You know, fingers? Let's go. Come on. But the, these are even turning yellow. So it's fall time. That means all these red leaves are going to fall. And then all these leaves from this, oh, they're turning red. From this tree is going to fall. So we got to get the net over this pond in the next couple days. Oh, yeah, there's leaves all over the ground here. So it's getting in the pond already. I'm slacking. Yeah, now you can see all the leaves on the ground. I'm slacking for sure. We got to get this net cover on. Okay, now, Tony just put the gazing ball back onto the pedestal. Josh is over there messing with the waterfall. But you see how much that waterfall is running now? We can hear it again. That really needed cleaning out that area right there. And Tony cleaned up all, as many of the leaves on the top as possible. You, as a matter of fact, you couldn't see. It was all leaves, and you couldn't see no pond. It looked like you could walk across this. So she took the net and got a bunch of leaves out of here, which is less that is going to degrade into the pond. We never got the net on yet, so we're kind of fighting Mother Nature. These are coming down, but these are coming down a lot. You know what you should do? So, what's that, buddy? Go up here and cut off this whole side of the tree. Just cut it off. And that way it leans, it falls forward. <laughs> Look at that. Awesome, awesome. We're getting stuff cleaned around here. I got a spider. You can hear it now. It's moving. And take your little five And little Lord had to play with the tortoise. That's a big one. Can you say Chompers? Chompers. Chompers, that's his name. You can pet him. Oh, did you just say that? She said get little foot? Yeah. Wow. Get we'll get her out. Wait, what are you doing, Alora? What are you doing? Fish hungry, you say? <laughs> Careful you don't fall over. I think that's enough. Not too much. This is the last one, okay? Careful. There you go. Thank you, sweetheart. You feed the fishies for Grandpa? Good girl. Oh, that's how you screw on the lid? <laughs> You're so damn adorable. You want to go back outside with Daddy? Ta-da! Yeah, Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, go watch. Be careful. Bye. Let's go back outside with Daddy. Who's that? That's Brutus. Is that? <laughs> All right, say bye to everybody. Look at the camera. Say bye. Bye. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, craziness is starting here. It is now the last week of October, and we are starting to... You know, panic here. We're getting stuff done. The next video, you're going to see a bunch of other stuff moving out. But we just made some moves in the other room. We're going to go and check them out now. But we're going to go ahead and move some more fish and make room so we can clear out both of these tanks and start, you know, bringing them down. But I do have some good, good news. I do believe that the sump is going to be here sooner than expected. So that is going to help us. Wait, before we walk out there, I forgot about, about this. The other night, I'm not sure if you guys seen, but this tank puked out so much water that I ended up giving up on it. I walked away. I'm like, either th this thing is coming down, down tomorrow or I just got the last leak with my last ditch effort. And uh, I went ahead and put this rag down here and I'm like, all right, I'm going, we're going away. And by the grace of God, the hair on my, my neck, it, I got the, the final week. But it is opening up more and more each and every single day from this side wall, blowing out all that uh, wood being wet. It's pulling away from the foot fiberglass. So I'm having to go down in there, push silicone down into these holes in between the wood and the foot fiberglass. And I thought this last time that this tank was a goner and we were going to have to just 
bite the bullet and throw the Paku in the, the, the monster pond and take this tank down. But we bought ourselves some time. I'm not sure how many days or how much time we actually bought because it will leak again. And uh, hopefully we can get that sump here. And then that is a hard steel body sump. Then we can take these Paku and put them in that sump and they'll be cramped in there, but we'll have enough time to start breaking th this down break down that tank, break down the dog bone, and be able to get it going. So it is getting crazy around here day by day. Okay, and with yesterday's uh, end of the day discussion, we got a list together of the material that we need to build this tortoise cage. It's got, gonna come out 34 inches, be let level with the front of this system three, because that's how much room we're used to w walking through here. So it's going to be 34 inches, come over about 12 foot here, and then it's going to angle back in. So when you, you walk out here, you walk next to the tortoise and go straight down. We're going to have a little divider right here. The small tortoise is on that side, the big tortoise is here. And that's going to be two layers of 2, two by 12 stacked on top, screwed together. But then the bottom floor of it is going to be actual plywood, so if they, that they dig, they're not going to mess up with the carpeting in, in here and all the pee and poo. It's not really, you know, safe to have it on your floor. It's going to smell nasty, but with the, the, the wood down, you can protect it a little bit more. You put down medium in there like cedar wood, wood chips and stuff like that and be able to pull that out with each time that, that they, you know, use the, the bathroom. So he was supposed to go up today and get, get it, but things got a little crazy around here. We got sidetracked with so much other stuff. So that's going to be on the agenda for this next week coming up. Maybe even the next video. We'll see about that. But if you got guys, look, we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. You guys seen that he moved all that salt water stuff. We moved it all underneath the Dwight Howard tank here. So that is now out of the way for the tortoise enclosure. There's just a few things there that we have to move yet yet again. But come over here. We have more stuff to move and we're going to get into moving some fish here soon. Look at the royal knife. So I told you guys he got nipped. I told you it would grow, grow back. And his tail is almost uh, grown back there. It's growing out so he'll make a full recovery. I have no doubt about that one. We have the stingray tank here. We're gonna go ahead and add the al uh, other albino male in into here. You guys know that ray came from first class aquatics. And we're gonna put him in here and see how he does. Look at them, they are just jumpy. <laughs> but, walk you guys all the way past here. Look, talking about that, talking about this, to get to this tank right here. <laughs> this is the tank we wanted to clear out to go ahead and put them puffers in. So now we have the shat koi, and then there's two goldfish in here, which will end up going out to the front pond. Um, and that, that'll have to be done over a few, few day period. We'll bring the goldfish out, put them in a tub on the ground, bring them from 85 degree water, bring them down to 74 in quarantine, and then we can adjust them to outside and bring them down even lower, and then put them in the front pond before they go ahead and go into hibernation for the year. We got some 78 degree days next week, so it's the perfect time to go ahead and do, do this. But then we're gonna take the Shat Koi. There's uh, probably, I'd say 10 right off the bat. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, 10, 11 of them. We're gonna go ahead and bring them all the way back here into this 300 gallon tub right here. It's just a white, white tub. It's a square. It's four by four by 30 inches tall. Has an FX4 on there. The Shat Koi will, will do fine in this tub. We'll do them, you know, a, a week or every other week a water change. Be able to get the puffers out here and make some room, clear out that 265, the one not in the 95. And uh, let's go ahead and get started on this. Let me go grab a net and I'll be right back. Okay, so you guys remember First Class Aquatics. You guys can find them on Facebook right now. They're getting ready to set up their YouTube and website and Instagram. So you guys know they dropped off this gold base albino pearl right here, which we're going to actually move right now. And then this beautiful 
I mean, beautiful, super white cross male that we're gonna grow out and add to our collection here. So let's go ahead and get on in here and see what we can grab. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Is this gonna be easy or is this gonna be hard? Come on, buddy. In the net, in the net. There we go. All right, we're got we're not gonna run run with him. So I'll meet you at the the, the other tank. Hey, he is wrapping his tail. He is not happy. There we go, buddy. Look at that. Look at that upgrade. Now. This brings us in. So that is the new male that we have right there. This is Pancake, the original female that we had dropped off. This is what I call the Stretch Pearl, but uh, there's a new name that's been going around and people are calling them Keys. But not, nonetheless, that's a female right there. This is one of our males right here. This is a, another female that I picked up along with that male r right there. We got him in a, a fit for fish deal. So we have three males, three females in, in, in here, and we got to figure out which male is going to get, get it right. I normally don't like putting this many males to, to together. I see problems that can arise, but this is a 10 foot by four foot tank. We've got the six rays, the Xanthic clown knife, and we've got this big beast of a Urelli Gooch over here. Look at those teeth. And of course the Jow catfish over here. Oh, sorry about that. And uh, we got this guy put wood in, in here, maybe having another male will spark some of these other guys into breeding more, but I wanna see who is the most aggr aggressive and wants to go after them the, the most. And then we'll decide how we're going to split these guys up. We could do them as three pairs, or we could, could just keep it as a breeding group. So we're gonna see how this goes. We gotta keep our eye on not only the males fighting, but also I heard that this guy was a little bit nippy with the females, although he's probably one of the smallest ones in here. Something we have to keep an eye on because we don't want our, our rays to get super messed up. But this is a very large tank, so we'll definitely see how that turns out. While we're out here, let's get a little update on this lungfish. You guys seen how tore up he was? He is almost back to 100%. I'd say he's probably at about 97% right now. It is amazing just how quick and how fast these guys, you know, he eel back, given the great water quality and food. It is amazing just how fast some of these fish will grow back, like that clown knife. The lungfish back here. And we have two more lungfish that are actually hidden in that center 240 right there. And this 195 on the, this end that I think we're going to try in with the 750. And we'll have one of the marbled Aethiopicus, one of the regular African, and then we have our West African inside. And uh, we should see how that one plays out. They are all back to 100% health. Then that'll give us two tanks that we could potentially store some stuff, helping out with that move over to here. But it's really, really detrimental when you're moving so many things at one time and you forget to check one, one thing or, you know, it slips you at your mind and, you know, accidents happen. So you always, someone just took a huge crap in here. Holy crap. That was bad. <laughs> but you always want to make sure you move just a little bit of fish at a time so you can really monitor your fish for a couple of days. So that's what we're do doing here with the, the, the rays and uh, giving you guys updates along the way. We did have some discrepancies between this catfish and that one in the first few days that they came in, but they are all doing fine now that... Uh, African giraffe cat was a really butthead over in that 580 over there. I had to re remove him. He seems to be doing fine in here. But once we get these new tanks in and set settled, 
we want to go through and basically revamp th these tanks here because this is nothing that we like to show off. This is just a tank that we're sho shoving fish in for now because we need the space. So we want to go through and actually scape this and make this look like a nice display tank because you got fish from Africa, you got fish from, you know, South America, you got, you know, hybrids in, in here. This tank just really doesn't gel very well. All right, guys, while I got you here talking about rays, I have seen our male B BD going after the f female again. Not sure if he got her plug, but come on over here. I want to give you guys a little update. Look at the size of this girl right here. And the, those ba the babies are de de definitely doing something in there. And that, that is not off of a, f a fresh feed. I'm due to feed that them tonight. Yeah, this is normal. And yeah, that is normal. Look, look at the brown ray. That's no normal. She's healthy. And then you look at the black female right there. He's got two big giant pumps on each side. Same thing with it. this girl. You can see her disc is chewed up. You can actually see the shape of the baby in, in this size here. This girl here, you can see how her disc is so chewed, chewed up and her, her back is progressing as well. Je Jerry said that he's seen these ones moving last night. I have not, you know, see, seen that yet. So we'll de definitely see. But this is the one that I've been watching. That's actually not the right one. It's this one. <laughs> There's actually a couple in there that are pretty fat that might, might also be as well, but they could just be fat. But her, I've seen it to where she pushes her back down and you see the humps push to, to the side. And I'm just wait, waiting to see movement on, on them ba the babies and then it's go time. So de the definitely with that cut coming, it's, you know, pretty awesome we'll get some return on the raise once again i think we had three bet batches this year already and uh not granted it what wasn't you know 16 pups it was one to three but that, that's all right so hope you guys enjoyed today's video we got a lot coming up in the next few vi videos things are really going to start moving here so we'll catch you in the next video as always stay fishing my friends